Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous. I, I mean, we're talking about it is so over the top beautiful uh, day here in the end times in paradise that uh, I don't know. We are so far over the top today. Don't know what it could look like to fall off the other side, but the weather forecast just. Check out the 10-day weather forecast for Ithaca, New York. Uh, good Lord, man. Uh, you know, if... Uh, it, oh, yes, it is Thursday, August 31st, 2023. Wrapping up another month. We are... What are we? Two-thirds September... November. We are two-thirds of the way through 2023. Did you guys check out that super blue moon last night? Good Lord. And we will have the super moon blazing all every night for the next few nights. And uh, so anyway, before the crowds start pouring in here in about an hour, uh... I'm trying to think, what can I do this time to to irritate Andy the Gardener and uh, Colony of Cells and Supremo? So, you know, we we've we've well, sort of talked. We've talked about space aliens. We've talked about ghosts. We've talked about life after death. But one thing I don't know. You know, I've, of course, I've talked a lot about Bigfoot on this channel since, uh, you know, Sancho and I went looking for Bigfoot for a month. And, you know, Sancho has actually been kidnapped by Bigfoot. I don't know how many of y'all, I will try to remember to put the link to the video. So, Sancho, you've actually been kidnapped by Bigfoot. So, you know Bigfoot is real. But you tell Andy the gardener that Bigfoot is real. But anyway, I don't know if I have ever talked about the Loch Ness Monster on uh, on this channel. So, Andy and Colony and Roy and Supremo, in, in, in your version of reality, uh, is the Loch Ness Monster a violation of any physical laws. Uh, does the Loch Ness Monster violate the laws of physics? I think I know just enough about uh, biology to, I, I don't think the Loch Ness Monster uh, violates the laws of physics. I am, uh, I am on the fence about the Loch Ness Monster. I am, um, uh, so, it's not like I believe or don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster, but I do not rule out the existence of the Loch Ness Monster, and it's not just the Loch Ness, there, there's, a, they're all over, they're in lakes all over, there's supposed to be one, up here in Lake Champlain, not too far from here. Uh, Champy, I think. And then we got one in this big lake out in uh, <clears throat> somewhere in western Canada. I can't remember the name of that monster. Uh, so I was really getting, uh, hoping, you know, I don't know if you heard about that uh, I guess this past weekend they uh, did one of these, you, you know, intense searches of Loch Ness to see if they could gather up any more evidence. I don't know, you've probably heard that hilarious story that they forgot to plug in. They forgot to plug in. The, uh, the this high tech microphone sounding equipment that they had gotten together. So they got all of this, uh, had this big search for Nessie, 
and forgot to plug in the microphone. So the interesting sounds they picked up, uh, unfortunately, they can't share with the world because the clueless fucking moron forgot to plug in the microphone. <clears throat> so anyway, we can't listen to Nessie. So it was, <clears throat> it was pretty much a bust. So everyone got a good chuckle. Uh, you know, the non-believers in Nessie got a big uh, laugh out of the whole deal, out of the latest failure to find any evidence of, of Nessie. I guess the weather was absolutely horrible over the weekend. It was the worst weekend to look for Nessie. So it was all <clears throat> just uh, water under the bridge, as it were, and we were back to where we've always been. But then this article came out, and uh, unfortunately it came out in this right-wing rag called the Telegraph is the one that Yahoo News is running today. So for a moment, I almost skipped over it that uh, <clears throat> what this article is referring to, I just thought it was one more article about what happened last weekend, but it's actually a pretty good... Uh, pretty good article pictured new Loch Ness monster sighting, but it's not new. This picture was taken in the year 2018, supposedly this picture was taken. Uh, I, I can't see the viewfinder of the camera. So anyway, I'm going to put the link on here so you can see... Uh, this picture that was taken I think in 2018 but it was just finally released that the woman who took these these photos uh, you know because they just had that big search she finally came forward and I do believe uh, that the woman her name is C H I E Chi uh, Chi Kelly. Uh, I do believe that I, I, I don't believe this is a hoax. Okay, this woman took a picture of this two humped thing, and then there's a, another picture where you can see the wake being created behind it. Uh, it looks pretty interesting to me. So let's read this article. And you can uh, say I'm going to put the link onto it. <coughs> for a celebrity creature sought for nearly a century by an army of investigators, it has proven annoyingly elusive. But now, new images of what has been claimed to be the Loch Ness Monster have emerged with one investigator hailing them as the, quote, most exciting ever. The photographs were taken in 2018, but were kept secret as the photographer feared public ridicule. I'm going to say C-H-I-E is pronounced Chi. Chi Kelly, who took the images and claimed the creature was moving at, quote, steady speed, was persuaded to go public following a high-profile search for the monster last weekend. Mrs. Kelly uh, said she and her husband, Scott, had been taking photographs of the area after having lunch and the doors in on the banks of the lock while on a family holiday on August 13th, 2018. Quote, I was just taking pictures with my Canon camera of Scott and our daughter Alyssa, who was then five, when about 200 meters from the shore, moving right to left at a steady speed, was this creature. 
it was spinning and rolling at times, we never saw a head or neck. After a couple of minutes, it just disappeared and we never saw it again. At first, I wondered if it was an otter or a pair of otters or a seal, but we never saw a head and it never came up again for air. It was making this strange movement on the surface. We did not hear any sound. There were these strange shapes below the surface. I'm not sure what she was referring to there. I could not make out any colors. The water was dark. I could not accurately assess its length, but the two parts that were visible were less than two meters long, you know, together. So we're talking six feet, which was a little bit disappointing to me, I admit. Uh, you know, there was no scale in these photos. So th there's no way in the photo knowing are we talking six feet or 40 feet. Well, the two things together were only about six feet long, which is a little disappointing. <clears throat> Quote, I don't know what it was, but it was definitely a creature, an animal. At the time, I did not want to face public ridicule by making the photographs public, close quote. So uh, then they had this big rigmarole. Uh, and again, you can see the, the, the photo showing the wake behind it if you go on the link. She showed the pictures to Steve Felton, who has spent more than 30 years trying to solve the mystery, having quit his job and sold his home in Dorset in 1991. Uh, so Felton has now persuaded her to release the photos. There was disappointment this weekend when hundreds of people took part in what was held as the biggest search for the creature in 30 years. Bad weather hampered efforts to launch heat-seeking drones, and after underwater microphones picked up four strange sounds, the investigators realized they had forgotten to turn on their recording equipment. Uh, it was either they didn't turn it on or they <laughs> forgot to plug it in. Uh, said investigator Felton, Feltham, quote, These are the most exciting surface pictures of Nessie I have seen. They are exactly the type of pictures I have been wanting to take for three decades. It is rare to see something so clear on the surface. They are vindication for all the people who believe there is something unexplained in Loch Ness. They are remarkable. I have studied them and still do not know what it is, close quote. So, Andy the gardener, would you please tell this clueless moron what the hell these two humps are? He would really like to know, and I would like to know too. And uh, so, Andy or Colony of Cells or Supremo, please tell us what these are. Are they an eel? Are they a seal? Are they... Just, I don't know, some flotsam and jetsam floating around in the lake. While the first recorded sighting of the Loch Ness Monster was recorded in the year 564, the legend rose to prominence in the 1930s following a flurry of supposed encounters and huge m media interest. Uh, Anyway, we've all known these, then of course, the 
famous uh, photo that we all know uh, was captured and published in the Daily Mail for decades. It was seen as evidence of the monster's existence. Uh, however, it was later described as a fake and is now believed to have been created as part of an elaborate hoax. I think the what they were saying, that famous photo, you know, of, of the Loch Ness monster's head coming out of the water is the naysayers are saying instead of the Loch Ness monster coming out of the water, since it's just a photo, not a video, was actually an otter diving into the water. What you're seeing is uh, an otter's rear end and tail going into the lake, not a monster coming out. And since it's a still photo, we don't know. Uh, but anyway, I just absolutely love these mysteries. And... Uh, with my five years of college, and I have a little bit more understanding of biology than I do physics, uh, I do not eliminate the possibility of, uh, of there being some undescribed species of large vertebrate swimming around in Loch Ness and Lake Champlain and, and, and all of these other lakes. It doesn't, I, I don't see, uh, a, a, again, the, the Nessie deniers, why uh, they are so vicious in their uh, denial of this. Uh, it's the, you know, this whole thing about closed-minded people uh, it is more than anything what I'm constantly flummoxed by is how viciously they deny anything that, that, that barely questions their version of reality. Uh, they are the, just the, the it, it, it's why people, what I don't get about, uh, why people just get so fucking triggered when you're talking about obviously life after death or even space aliens uh, it is a bigger issue than I guess the Loch Ness Monster and, uh, and Bigfoot, but I, I just don't get why people uh, who are, are, are so j just that triggered and that threatened when somebody uh, is asking a question. Uh, I am curious uh, what this thing swimming around Loch Ness is. I, I think there's a better than 50% chance that the, that this thing is a live animal. Uh, is it a, an undescribed species? Is it some sort of, I, I think, what's it called? A plate? Lysosaur? Uh, is it is it a living fossil? You know, one of the schools of thought is is basically a sea monster. Uh, you know, an animal that used to exist, basically a dinosaur. I think it's called a plysosaur. Could uh, some species of dinosaur? Uh, managed to uh, survive the great asteroid and is still swimming around. A little far-fetched. I'm a little more going for the giant eel, especially this latest sighting, you know, just being six feet long. Uh, a sturgeon. Uh, you hear the sturgeon uh, explanation 
I am leaning, I do think it's a real animal, probably more likely a sturgeon or an eel than a plysosaur, but, uh, you know, these are just fun little, it's just like, we, we got to have some mystery uh, out there left to solve, but of course the biggest mystery uh, left to solve is, is why humans uh, are so wedded to their belief in infinite growth on a finite planet. Uh, there are a hell of a lot more people who believe in infinite growth on a finite planet uh, than believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Ness, little dog, what do you think? And you say, Pop, I'm getting hungry and thinking it's time for me to have some chicken. And we're going to get out there on this spectacularly gorgeous day. Get ready for the deluge of vacationers on Labor Day. Man, heading to the mid-40s tonight at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Eric Hanna. Eric Hanna, if you are listening to this, would you please look at your fucking email, your fucking text? Bye, guys. Man, look at this day. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, just another day in paradise. Bye, guys.